Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I have a couple of announcements. First of all, on August 19th, that is our next uh, member conference call and it is Conversations with Dr. Pam, that's me, and we're going to talk about PMS and hormones. And so, um, of course, a lot of women will want to hear this. A lot of guys might want to listen to it too. If you live with a female, it might be good to know more about this. Anyway. Um, and then it is time to register for fall semester. We've added a couple more courses, so check your newsletter or check online at wellnessforminstitute.org. Uh, but fall semester starts right the week after Labor Day, and I can't even believe I'm saying this, but Labor Day is not that far off, so it really is time to get moving on that. And um, fall conference, November 8th through 10th, and our special guest is Dr. Colin Campbell, the author of Whole, Rethinking the Science of Nutrition. And we also have Dr. Joe Keon coming, the author of Whitewash, Dr. Goldhammer, author of Pleasure Trap, uh, Laura Theodore, the Jazzy Vegetarian, and we're actually going to be having a concert on Saturday night in conjunction with our fabulous dinner. So, uh, And there will be more speakers announced. We're working on some other things, too. But it's also time to register. Last time we had Dr. Campbell in town, we turned away like 50 people that we couldn't accommodate. So don't wait till the last minute to register if you are planning to spend that weekend with us. All righty. So I've been covering this book, Whole, Rethinking the Science of Nutrition, and I am so glad I'm doing this. I mean, I hope it's benefiting you, but I'll tell you what, it's benefiting me a whole lot because I give a lot of talks to the public and I spend a lot of time consulting with people and I have used so many of the tidbits that I have picked up from reviewing the book again and taking out the important points to share with you. So I hope you're getting the same benefit from using this material. So, of course, Campbell's pervasive theme throughout the book is talking about reductionism. And uh, he talks about reductionist science, looking at genetics and drugs and you know, that sort of thing. But he talks about reductionism and how pervasive it is in the practice of medicine. And he says, rightly, we don't have a healthcare system, we have a sick care system. And while reactive medicine is you know, it's the way to treat some things. I mean, you, you set a leg, a broken leg with a cast. You don't put a cast on the leg to prevent the break. I mean, that's an example of how reactive medicine can be helpful. But our approach to other conditions is just ridiculously overreactive. Doctors treat people who are sick and they act like we just don't even know the reason why this happens. And it's like one day you're fine and the next day you have heart disease or cancer or diabetes and we just don't know how it happens. You're walking down the street one day and you're just a person with bad luck. Well, this is terrible thinking because what we're doing is encouraging people to wait until they're sick. By not acknowledging the cause of disease, we're encouraging people to wait until they're sick and then get treated for it. And then what do we do? We treat the symptoms instead of the underlying cause of disease. And how do we do that? Usually with drugs. And what will happen is that the symptoms will recur and they will progress. So symptomatic treatment involves the very specific use of certain substances, we call them drugs, that are designed to uh, treat very specific events in the path to disease development. And it ignores the complexities associated with both health and disease, but it also comes with side effects that range from just being uncomfortable to some of them life-threatening. And then these side effects are treated with other drugs that also have side effects, and the combination of the drugs can become life-threatening. Nutrition, on the other hand, can prevent disease and reverse it. And of course, I think that not many people could actually, with an open mind, read the medical literature and not conclude that the source of a lot of our disease is nutrition. But the problem is it doesn't fit neatly into the reductionist model. Researchers attempt to make it fit in by looking for active ingredients like single nutrients in food that have biological effects on the body. But this is a wrong-headed approach. And just one example is that eating an apple is the important activity, not extracting a single nutrient or two from the apple, trying to replicate the pharmacological model of medicine. Medical practices actually become chemical practice, a philosophy not compatible with what we now know about nutrition. Well, this brings us to the supplement business, and I have to say Dr. Campbell gives equal treatment to the alternative practitioners in the supplement business. It's alternatives uh, medicine's version of reductionism. While the alternative health community criticizes traditional medical doctors for the use of drugs, they've fallen into the same erroneous thinking that nutrients taken from food are at least as good and sometimes better than the whole foods in which we find them. The logic, Campbell says, goes something like this. Oranges are good for us. Oranges contain vitamin C, therefore vitamin C is good for us, even if we take it in the form of a pill instead of eating the orange or other foods in which we find vitamin C. 
Campbell cites some fascinating research conducted at Cornell by a Chinese student who studied the effect of an apple on health. He found that 100 grams of apple, just a half a cup, had the vitamin C activity equivalent to 1,500 milligrams of vitamin C. But an, an analysis showed that 100 grams of apple only contains 5.7 milligrams of vitamin C. So in other words, the vitamin C activity of an apple is 263 times as potent as the same amount of isolated vitamin C or chemical. Campbell says this is due to the interaction of vitamin C with other antioxidants in food. And, um, and, and you can't replicate that when you take the vitamin C out of the food. Dr. Liu conducted further research on the synergistic interaction between vitamin C and other antioxidants and discovered that their biological effects weren't limited to just antioxidant activity. These included inhibiting proliferation of cells, we call that cancer, decreasing cholesterol, and slowing markers of aging. The phenomenon is similar for all nutrients in food, which is why discussions of the nutrient content of food and recommended daily intake is basically irrelevant. We should be focusing on a health-promoting diet rather than selecting certain nutrients to focus on um, in usually isolated nutrient form. The supplement industry, however, has based its entire business on the idea that there's a single active ingredient in food that has a biological effect and that that effect can be maintained even if you take the nutrient from the food. Campbell calls this the natural medicine approach to health and states that it is no more effective for treating disease than drugs and reminds everybody that isolated nutrients can also be harmful. Campbell states that the supplement industry is actually more effective in some ways than the drug industry in promoting products because the supplement makers can claim that their products are natural, the same as found in food. But Campbell reminds us that there's nothing natural about taking uh, nutrients and pills that have been extracted from food. Lots of money has been invested in looking at positive effects and most have shown little effect. Most of these research studies have shown little effect and many have shown that even harm can come from taking these isolated nutrient supplements. And when I come back to you on Thursday, we'll actually talk about some examples of how supplements can do harm. And I think most people think natural, food-based, what could be harmful about that? Well, if you're eating the nutrients in the apple or the kiwi or the summer squash or the potato, no harm. Take those nutrients out, that's where the problem is. So I'll stop there. We'll reconvene on uh, Thursday. And as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would benefit from watching it. Have a great day.